The Hubble Space Telescope has amazed the globe with views of space and a greater knowledge of how the cosmos works since its installation in 1990. Despite its age and tiny size, the Hubble Space Telescope is still regarded as one of the greatest telescopes in comparison to the gigantic 8-10 to 10 meter observatories created on Earth, with even larger ones planned for the future. The 2.4-meter Hubble mirror is common for contemporary research telescopes with optics in their third decade. However, it outperforms several of the most advanced ground-based telescopes on a constant basis. It is still considered the pinnacle of optical and ultraviolet astronomy, with demand for its usage and study considerably exceeding available viewing time each year. The Hubble telescope travels at 17,500 miles per hour and has traveled as far as Neptune, our solar system's furthest planet. Since its mission began in 1990, it has gazed into the distant past of places more than 13.4 billion light years from Earth, making over 1.3 million observations. It has aided in the determination of the universe's age, which is currently known to be 13.8 billion years old about three times the age of Earth. It has also helped to determine the rate at which the universe is expanding by discovering two Pluto moons, Nix and Hydra. And it has also developed the 3D map of dark matter, which is even cooler. We could go on and on about Hubble's contributions to research and discoveries, but one in particular piques our interest, the finding of the 10th planet larger than Pluto. Michael Brown of Caltech revealed the finding of a new planet that is bigger and further away than Pluto. 2003 UB300 is the solar system's furthest directly seen body and the fourth brightest Kuiper Belt object. Brown, who discovered the planet with colleagues Chad Trehelia at the Gemini Observatory on Mount Aya in Hawaii and Yale University's David Ravitz, stated that it is unquestionably larger than Pluto. Despite NASA's apparent support, they even joked about bringing out all your pencils and changing some textbooks. Not all astronomers agreed with the team's classification of Pluto as a planet. In recent years, several scientists, including Brown, have suggested that Pluto should no longer be classed as a planet. He then reasoned that if we're prepared to award Pluto planetary status, we should refuse it to even larger entities. Pluto, along with hundreds of other objects in the Kuiper Belt, circles the Sun between 30 and 55 astronomical units away. In case you're not familiar with space metrics, 1 AU is equivalent to 92.96 million miles or 149.6 million kilometers. Almost two years ago, discussions took place in the same room about another object, the planetoid Sedna, which at the time was the most distant object known in the solar system. It was noted this object is just beyond Sedna and sets a new distance record. Planetoid Sedna is now 98 AU away from the Sun and has never been closer to it. At the extreme end of its 11,500-year orbit, Sedna reaches a distance of 943 AU. Similarly, 2003 UB313 has reached its furthest point in its 560-year orbit, 97 AU from the Sun, or more than 9 billion miles or 14.5 billion kilometers from the Sun. It will be 38 AU from the Sun when it reaches its closest point in around 280 years. So how come it hadn't been discovered? Unlike most planetary orbits, which are nearly in the elliptical plane, 2003 UB313 has a 44-degree off-plane orbit. No one looks up that high in the sky for these kinds of objects, Brown explained. We've only been looking that high because we've looked everywhere else so far. The scientists observed the new planet for the first time on October 31, 2003, as part of a systematic study using the Palomar Observatory's 48-inch Samuel Ocean Telescope. However, because of the object's sluggish movement, astronomers did not discover it until they reanalyzed photos. Alan Stern, an astronomer at the Southwest Research Institute in Boulder, Colorado, stated it was cool but not surprising on January 5, 2005. He was also the principal investigator for NASA's New Horizons mission to Pluto. In a 1991 study, Stern anticipated that the Kuiper Belt and the Oort Comet Cloud will contain hundreds of bigger objects. 
Uranus and Neptune's axial tilts were created by collisions with objects this massive. For every strike, there are many misses. Some of them must still be stored in the solar system's farthest reaches. He also stated that the asteroid series should be classified as a planet. Basically, anything with enough gravity to make itself spherical should be called a planet in his opinion. Stern believes that people should get used to the thought that our solar system contains dozens of planets, that the floodgates have opened, and that we'll have a crop of these tiny fellas in 10 years. They're referred to as dwarf planets by him. Stern argues that, just as the most frequent stars in the cosmos are cool dwarfs far smaller than our sun, certain ice balls may be the most common sort of planetary body in the galaxy. During a conference call, Brown informed reporters that his team had been examining the new planet with as many telescopes as possible in preparation for the rendezvous. Trujillo then utilized Mauna Hawaii's Gemini North Telescope to get a near-infrared spectrum, which reveals information on the planet's surface features. Pluto's surface is blanketed with frozen methane, according to early studies. The existence of methane ice suggests a primordial surface that has not been considerably heated since the formation of the solar system four and a half billion years ago. According to Brown, if 2003 UB313 ever got near to the sun, all of the methane ice would have evaporated. No other Kuiper Belt object has a surface like that. The new object, on the other hand, is almost gray in hue, whereas Pluto appears somewhat red. As of yet, the team has no explanation for this difference. The planet's size is limited by the quantity of light it reflects. Brown, on the other hand, argued that even if it reflected 100% of the light that touched it, it would still be as huge as Pluto. However, no substance is known to be as reflecting, and the larger the item must be, the less bright its surface is. If 2003 UB313 reflects 90% of sunlight, like a fresh snowfall on Earth does, its size would be little greater than initially estimated. He also thinks that 2003 UB313 is about one quarter the size of Pluto, or around 1,777 miles or 2,860 kilometers wide. Attempts to discover the new body of the Spitzer Space Telescope's heat sensing capabilities have so far been fruitless, but scientists are continuing their probe. The lack of a Spitzer discovery constrains the size of the object. According to the team, the entire diameter of 2003 UB313 cannot be higher than 2,206 miles or 3,550 kilometers. The team plans to observe the object as soon as possible using the Hubble Space Telescope. The present designation of the object is tentative, but Brown claims that his team has submitted a permanent name to the International Astronomical Union, which has authorized solar system nomenclature. He didn't want to share the potential name until it was finalized. Brown also stated that it will be visible for the next six months and that it was now virtually directly overhead in the constellation CTUs in the early morning eastern sky. He also calculated that the new object might have been discovered by an amateur astronomer using a 14-inch scope, a CCD camera, and a dark location. Because this planet is so far away, as well as its small size, it is impossible to examine it adequately without specialized technology. There are currently no plans to send a spacecraft to fly by it soon. But powerful telescopes such as the James Webb will be employed for the purpose. In fact, the James Webb Telescope website has chosen this planet as one of its priorities, as well as smaller objects in the solar system, to study their landscapes. What are your thoughts on the ongoing debate about Pluto's classification as a planet and the discovery of new celestial objects like 2003 UB313? Engage with us by leaving a comment, subscribing to our channel, and clicking the notification bell for regular updates. Keep watching, stay inspired, and get ready for more exciting discoveries. See you in our next episode.